Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Whiteboard Friday. This week, I have a special request from one of our users to talk about an SEO checklist for new sites that aren't ranking yet. So I've created a new website. I want to make sure that I'm doing all the right things in the right order, that I've got everything set up, and my, my website's not yet ranking. Well, what are the things that I should be doing and maybe some things that I shouldn't be doing? And so I wanted to create a brief checklist with this Whiteboard Friday. If we find this useful, maybe we'll expand it, do even more stuff with it in the future. So let's, let's run through. You've got a new site that you've just launched. You're setting things up for success. What do you need to worry about? First off, accessibility. What I mean by this is users and search engines both need to be able to reach all of the pages, all the content that you've created on your website in easy ways. And you need to make sure you don't have any sort of dumb mistakes that can, that can harm your SEO. So these are things like 404s and 500 errors and 302s instead of 301s, duplicate content, missing title tags, thin content where there's not much material on the page for the search engines to grab onto, maybe for users as well. Two tools that are great for this. So first off, Google Webmaster Tools, which is completely free. Uh, you can register at google.com slash webmasters. And uh, the SEO Moz call, crawl through the SEO Moz Pro web app, also very useful uh, when you're looking at a new site. And we, we sort of built a bunch of, bunch of features in there that we wish Google Webmaster Tools kept track of, but they don't. And so some of those features are uh, included in the SEO Moz crawl, including things like uh, 302s, for example, um, some thin content stuff. So that can, be, that can be quite helpful. Next up, keyword targeting. So this, right, this, I mean, this makes some sense that you have to choose the right keywords to target. So what I want to have is, you know, if gobbledygook, pro pro probably an awful keyword for anyone to be targeting, no search volume, just bad choice in general. But, right, we want to be looking at, do, do these have good search volume, right? Are, are some users actually searching for them? I mean, you might not be able to target high value terms because you're also looking for low difficulty when you're first launching a site. Right? You, you don't want to necessarily shoot for the moon. Maybe you do on your home page or you know, some branded page, that, some, some product page. But for the things that you know you want to target and you want to work on early, uh, short term, right? maybe some content that you've got, some of those uh, feature pages for the product or service you're offering, and you think to yourself, you know, I, I'm not going to be able to target you know, gobbledy, which is, oh, that's really tough. But maybe gobbledy zook, you know, that'll, that'll, that'll be easier. Uh, and so you could look at search volume, the relevance to the website. Please, by all means, make sure that you have something that's relevant that's actually pulling in searches you care about, and low difficulty. If you've got that taken care of, you've got your keyword targeting. Content quality and value. If you have a bunch of users coming to this page and they think to themselves, I, I, this doesn't really answer my query, or yeah, maybe this answers one portion of it, but I wish there was more detail here, more video, more images, maybe, maybe a nice graphic that explains some things, a data set, some references to where they got this information, uh, you know, not just a bunch of blocks of text. Maybe I'm looking for something that describes a process, something that explains it fully. If you can do that, if you can build something remarkable where all of these people change from, huh, huh, what's this, to, oh, you know what, instead it's, I am happy. I also am happy. This page makes me so happy. Yay, I'm going to stick my tongue out. If you can get that level of enjoyment and, and satisfaction from your users with the quality of the content that you produce, you're going to do much better in the search engines. And, and search engines have got some really sophisticated algorithms that look at true quality and value. You can see Google's gotten so much better about putting really good stuff in results. Even sometimes when it doesn't have a lot of links or it's not doing hardcore keyword targeting, when it's great stuff, uh, they're doing a good job of ranking it. Next up, design quality, user experience, and usability. This is tough. Unless you have a professional designer, you have a professional design background, you, you almost certainly need to hire someone or go with a very simple, basic design that's, that's very user-friendly that you know when you, you know, survey your friends, survey people in your industry, survey people in your company, survey people in your ecosystem, that they go, yeah, 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 this, this looks really good. I'm very happy with the design. Maybe I'm only giving it a you know, 6 out of 10 in terms of beauty, but a, an 8 out of 10 in terms of usability. I, I understand the content of the site. It's easy for me to find things and they flow. There's really no point in ranking unless you're nailing these two because you're not going to get many more customers. People are just going to be frustrated by the website. Uh, there's a few tools you can use on the web to test these out. So Five Second Test, Feedback Army, Silverback App, all of these are potentially useful uh, for checking the usability user experience of the site. 
social account setup. Because social and SEO are coming together like never before, right? Google is showing plus ones and things that people share by default in the, uh, in the search engine rankings. Bing is showing all the stuff that's been shared on Facebook and they're putting it above the rest of the content. Really, really pays to be in social. And social signals help uh, search engines better understand or, or better rank things as well as having this nice second order effect on user and usage data, on branding, on uh, uh, you know, the impact of people seeing those sites through social sharing and potentially linking to them. So social account setup, at the very least, you probably want to have these four, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Google Plus, right? All of those have got, Google Plus is only about 25 million, but it's very growing very fast. LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook are all uh, over 150 million users right now. I think Twitter's at 200 million, Facebook's at 750 million. So at least have your pages set up for those. Make sure the account experience is the same across them, using the same photos, same branding, same description, so people get a good sense when they see you in the social world. And you probably want to start setting something up to be monitoring and tracking these. You might want to sign up for something like a Bitly. Um, I used to really recommend PostRank, but unfortunately they don't track Facebook since Google bought them anymore. So it's a little more frustrating. Uh, the, the SEO Moz web app will start to, to track these for you pretty soon. Uh, and once you've got those social accounts set up, you can feel good about sharing the content that you're producing through those social accounts, finding connections, building up in that world, and spending the appropriate amount of time there, uh, depending on the value you're, you're feeling back from that. Next up, link building. And this is where I know a lot of people get sort of off the wrong, off to the wrong start and it's incredibly hard to recover. I actually just got an email in my inbox before we started doing Whiteboard Friday uh, from someone who had started a new website and he's like, oh, I got these 300 links and you know, now, I'm, now I'm not ranking anymore. I was doing great last week for the first six weeks after my launch, I was ranking great. And I started a, just a quick look at the backlinks and I went, oh, oh no. I think you know, th this person really went down the route of I'm gonna get a bunch of low quality, easy to acquire links and for a new site in particular, it's so dangerous because Google is just really on top of throwing people out uh, of the index or penalizing them very heavily when their link profile looks really scummy. And when you don't have any trustworthy quality signals to, to boost you up, uh, that's when low quality links can, can hurt the most. So good things to do. Start with your business contacts and your customers. They are great places to get links from. Your customers are willing to link to you, awesome. Get them to link to you. If the contacts that you have in the business world are willing to say, hey, my friend you know, Rand just launched a new website, boom. That's a great way of doing it. All your email contacts, your LinkedIn contacts, the people that you know uh, personally and professionally, if you can ask them, hey, you know, would you uh, support me by throwing a link to me on your about page or your blog roll or your uh, you know, list of customers or your list of vendors, whatever it is, right? Uh, guest posts and content. This is, this is a great way to do uh, good sort of content, positive uh, uh, content production and earning links back for that. So finding trustworthy sites that, that have uh, lots of RSS subscribers and are well renowned and can, can give you visibility in front of your audience and give you a nice link back if you can contribute positively to those. Um, I also like high quality resource lists. So this would be things like um, the, the better, better Business Bureau maybe, that sort of falls in, a little in the directory world, but something like a uh, Crunchbase. Right? If you're a startup in the technology world, you definitely need to have a Crunchbase listing. Um, you might want to be on some Wikipedia lists. Granted, those are no follow, but that's still okay. That's probably a good place to get some visibility. Uh, there might be industry specific lists that are like, you know, these are, um, I don't know, heavy machine production facilities in the United States. Great, okay, I, sh I should be on that list. That's what I do, right? Uh, news media and blogs. So getting the press to cover you, getting blogs in your sphere to cover you, finding those emailing the editors, letting them know that you're launching this new website. That's a, that's a great time to say, hey, this business is transforming. We're launching a new site. We're changing our branding, whatever it is. That's sort of a press-worthy message. You can get someone to look at you. Review sites, review blogs are great for this too as they'll sort of say, oh, you've got a new application. You've got a new mobile service. Maybe we'll link to you. Uh, that could be interesting. Relevant social industry and app account links, right? So uh, if I contribute something to the Google Chrome store, right? If I contribute something to the Apple store, if I uh, am contributing something to a design portal, a design gallery. All of those kinds of industry stuff and accounts that you can get are, are likely worth submitting to, worth getting your website listed on. Uh, and then social media link acquisition. So 
You know, this is obvious stuff where you spend time on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Google+, connecting with people, and over time building those relationships that'll get you the links, uh, possibly through one of these other forms, or, or just through the friendliness of them noticing and liking and enjoying your content. Uh, and that's what content marketing is all about as well. So these are great ways to start, very safe ways to do link building. They're not short-term wins, right? This, these, almost all of them, require at least some effort some investment of your time and energy, some creativity, some good content, you know, some, some authenticity in your marketing versus a lot of the stuff that tempts people very early on. They're like, oh, sweet, you know, I have a new website. I need to get like 500 links as soon as possible. So I'm going to try things like uh, reciprocal link pages, right? I'm just going to put up a, a list of, uh, you know, reciprocal link partners. I'm going to co-contact a bunch of other firms. They'll all link to me and we'll all link to each other. It'll be a happy marriage of links. No, it's, it's not. It's not a wonderland. Uh, low quality directories, right? You search for SEO friendly directory. If it shows up on that list, chances are, even in Google, right? Like Google is showing you a bunch of bad stuff. I, someone was asking me recently on email, they said, hey, I, I really need some examples of sites that have done manipulative link building. I was like, oh, it's so easy. Search for SEO friendly directory and look at who's paid to be listed in those directories. They almost all have spammy, manipulative link profiles. And it's funny because you go to those, and I don't know why people don't do this, but try searching for the brand names that come up in those lists. None of them rank for their own brand name. Well, why is that? Like, clearly they're killing themselves with these terrible, terrible links, right? So low quality directories, really avoid that. Uh, article marketing or article spinning, I talked about that a few weeks ago on Whiteboard Friday. Also a practice I would strongly recommend you avoid. Especially, I, I know it can work. I know there's people for whom it does work. But especially early on, it can just kill you. It really can get you uh, banned or penalized out of the engines and you just won't rank anywhere if your link profile starts out spammy. Paid links is another obvious one. Uh, forums, open form spam, so kind of going across the web. Oh, look, here's a guest book that's open. Forgot to put no file. I'm going to leave a link there. Oh, here, look, it's a forum that accepts you know, registration and they, don't, they forgot to close their uh, uh, no follow off. Anyone can leave a link. Eh, even things like do follow blogs, right? Do follow blog comments. Man, you know, it ri it's really risky. You just, because they're linking to bad places a lot of the time and it's usually manipulative people who have no intent to create something of value for the search engines. They're merely trying to manipulate their rankings. And when, whenever you have a tactic like that, it attracts people who have nasty websites. And then Google looks at those and goes, okay, they're linking to a bunch of nasty sites. Well, I don't want to count those links. Or maybe, maybe I'm even going to penalize some of the people that they're linking to. That, that really sucks. Uh, and then link farms, right, which is essentially setting up all these you know, different systems of links that point to each other across tons of domains that are completely artificial, link for no human reason uh, or no discernible human reason and are merely meant to manipulate the engines. This type of stuff can be, is very, very dangerous when you're early on. If you've already built up, you know, a good collection of these types of links, you're much safer. But you do have some risk in those first three, six, nine months after you've launched a new site around doing wrong things on the link building front. And, and getting yourself into a situation where you're penalized. And we see a ton of that through SEO Moz q and I get it in email. We, you see it on the web all the time. So be cautious around that. And hopefully, this checklist will help you uh, get your site to a nice established place. And you can keep doing some great marketing and eventually win the internet. I wish you good luck with your new website. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching. See you again next week for another edition of Whiteboard Friday. Take care.